How are we doing, guys? So, we now resume our regularly scheduled sorting. So we're uh, still looking at Scars of Mirrodin. We're going to be covering the black and the blue today. Uh, artifacts are for tomorrow, and then we move on to uh, the second part of the block. So we've got here is a, uh, you know, bunch of ho hum stuff, the likes of which you expect out of black. Uh, love a little instant that gives uh, a creature plus one plus one infect until end of turn. That's an interesting, a very interesting card. It's got a lot of different uses. Um, it, it, you know, if you need to squeeze that last point of damage in for infect, it's there. Or if your opponent is beating the snot out of you with a, uh, a non-infect deck, you can just sit there and say, um, yeah, um, that guy who gets through and is probably going to deal lethal damage to me, he gets a power boost and infect. I've got six life yet. I've got six life left. He's going to do seven points of infect damage to me. I take seven poison counters. It can buy you a turn. It really can. I've seen it done. I've done it myself. Kid science. Fun stuff. Draws Hopper. I can't think of anyone who plays this damnable thing. It's a 2-1 for 2. Get, sacrifice a creature to give it flying till end of turn. I mean, it's a sacrifice outlet. I'll give it that. Um, there are so many sacrifice, good sacrifice outlets available. I don't know why you'd ever want to play this one. It's just not a good card. I mean, even in draft, I mean, it's just like it's a filler card. You don't play this because you want to. You play this because you need more bodies. That's the only reason why you'd ever play it. I'm serious. Grasp of Darkness, I put in the wrong spot. Painsmith, not a bad card, it's okay. Uh, when you cast an artifact, you may have a target creature get plus two, plus zero, oh, and death touch till end of turn. That, you know, with a 2 1 body, that's, that's more or less on curve. That, that's pretty nice, actually. Pretty nice. Plague Stinger. This is one of the best infect creatures printed. It's a 1-1 one, one flying infect for colors in a black. That's that's huge. That, that's really good. It's got evasion. It's got infect. It's low casting cost. It's a really good creature. Oh, okay. Psychic Miasma. Calls Black Sorcery. Target player discards a card. If the land was discarded this way, return Miasma from your graveyard to your hand. Well, return the Miasma to your hand. Well, not, not from graveyard to hand. Whatever. Technically, it's not in graveyard until it finishes resolving. But, um, eh, it's okay. I don't think I've ever seen it used. There are better discard cards available. I mean, I'll be perfectly blunt, I have a discard deck ha hanging around, and I've never tried to make a standard legal discard deck. I mean, my current discard deck is just like, really? I'm running him to Torak. Psychic Miasma is no him to Torak. In fact, nothing these days is a him to Torak. Because wizards learned that him to Torak is stupid good. Stupid good. First common, never to be restricted. Bam. And this is where Grasp of Darkness fits in. Double black, instant. Dark creature gets Nate 4, Nate 4 till end of turn. It's a pretty solid removal card. It's not Dismember, I mean... People will run Dismember in anything, but that's a couple sets away. Right now we're talking about this one. Western Grub, it's a 2-2 Swamp Walker, and it goes to the graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses two life, no one cares, no one runs this because they want to. You won't see this in a constructed deck, anywhere. Unless the person has a ridiculously small card pool. Uh, Contagious Nim. Basically, he's a skin zombie with infect. It's not bad. It's solid. It's playable. 
Okay, yeah, it's a playset. I try to keep a playset of cards hanging around. Bark Reaver, the 3 2 for 3. Human warrior. I mean, if he had zombie tribal, they might. If he was zombie, they might have actually reduced his power to put him online with scathe zombie. I don't know. I'm not 100 percent certain. Yeah. Once again, he's one of those cards that no one plays because they really want to. He's a filler card. He's not flashy or anything. But he can get the job done if you need him to. Necrogen Scudder. This is. This is a card that really does fit in pretty well with the old Suicide Black mentality. Especially considering the fact that if you want to make a, uh, a Suicide Black deck, you can drop this guy on turn one with the Dark Ritual. Two calls on a black for a 3-3 three, three flyer. When he hits the board, you'll lose three life. I mean, you just look at him like, hold on a second, he's a Serpent Warrior that flies? Okay, I'll take that. I mean, Serpent Warrior was never particularly good. It was slightly overcosted, if I recall correctly. If I recall correctly. I'm not 100% certain. But, um, this thing? That's good! That's actually good! You can use that! That's that's an aggressively costed three... That's an aggressively costed three power flyer. Relic Putrescence, Enchant Artifact, when it becomes tap control... Whenever the artifact comes tapped, it's controlling its poison counter. I don't think I've ever seen anyone run this. Um, maybe once or twice. At best, it's a filler card. No one likes it. Uh, Iker Rats. These guys were fun in draft. I don't know if anyone played them constructed. He's called Stell Black for 2 1 Infect. When he enters the battlefield, each player gets a poison count. Um, it's not bad, it's, it's decent. It's not horrible or anything. Black Glee. Black. Cleave Goblin. For some reason, people don't like. He's a 2-1 haste, in fact. Um, a haste is usually out of color for black. Um, this guy would have been just as good in a 3-slot without haste, like the uh, the Contagious Nim. But um, I think they just bumped him one mod and gave him haste to make him a counterpart for the Nim. I mean, he comes online, he swings the same turn the Contagious Nim does. Theoretically, you can go turn three Contagious Nim, turn four Black Cleave Goblin, swing with the Nim and the Goblin. And, um, it kind of sort of works. I don't know. I don't, he's not const I don't think he's constructed uh, worthy, but, eh. Which is what it is. Flesh Allergy. Twin Double Black. Sacrifice a creature when you cast it. It's part of the casting cost. Uh, destroy a creature, its control loses life, equal to the number of creatures put into graveyards from battlefield this turn. So basically, it's two colors, double black, sacrifice a creature, destroy a creature, your opponent's probably losing at least two life. It's okay. Um, it's a whole hum card, I don't think I've seen anyone do anything with it. Instill Affection. It's alright. Uh, put an egg one, egg one counter on a creature, draw a card. It's okay. Member side is one of those. I don't know. Member side would be better if it was cheaper to cast. At four mana, being able to name a card and search through your opponent's graveyard hand and library for all copies of that card and exile them. I mean. Well, non-land card. But still, I mean, Member Side is one of those cards that, if it was cheaper to cast, it would be a hell of a lot better. I mean... I mean... I, mean, I think it would be a great sideboard card in uh, Type 1. I believe they call that Vintage these days. Um, you know, you sideboard in, and if you can first turn... Bust out member side at you know in game two of a best two out of three match, and just bam, call a card, look for your opponent's deck, pull out you know dangerous card of death and destruction that he needs to make some of his stuff work. Even then, main decking it and 
would be completely bad. You know, you just name a card. You don't even have to name a card that you think your opponent's playing, whatever. You still get to look. You get to scout your opponent's entire deck. I don't know. I, I don't... I'm not impressed by it. I'm just not. Skin Render, on the other hand, is impressive. He's uh, 4 mana for a 3-3. Three, three. When he hits the board, put 3 neg-1, neg-1 counters on target creature. That's not bad. Um, best case scenario, he's... A better Necrotal? You know, worst case scenario... You're paying 4 mana for a, a Hill Giant in black. That... Nukes a worthless creature. Bleak Coven Vampires, he's a 4-3. If you have Metalcraft when he enters the battlefield, you siphon 4 life out of your opponent. Yeah, just stick a straw in your opponent for four. <laughs> eh. I... Yeah. I don't like him. He doesn't thrill me. He doesn't do anything for me. Painful Quandary is another one of those cards that doesn't really do anything for me, though I have seen it used to good effect. Um, three calls, double black. It's enchantment. When your opponent casts a spell, that player loses five life unless he or she discards a card. Um... It's not... I'm not going to say it's bad. It's a great effect. I just love to see the effect toned down a little bit and put on a lower casting cost card. Because at 5 mana, that's just not aggressive enough to get the job done. It's just not. I mean, if, it was t if you downed it to 2 life and put it on a, like a 3 casting cost card, that'd be nice. But otherwise, no, not really. Skithrix the Blight Dragon, you know, you see, this, this demonstrates pretty much why... You now, there are some people who... I've seen some people actually say that just because a card is rare doesn't mean it should be better than um, comparable, you know, commons or uncommons. And it's just like, really? Really? So you'd, you'd be happy to op opening up a booster pack with a rare card that was no better than a common or an uncommon. You're on drugs. Then you're lying to me. One of the two. Uh, for example, just compare to the vampires we just passed a moment ago. Skithrix has the same casting cost, an extra point of toughness. He flies. Oh, and he has infect, an optional haste, and regeneration. Seriously. That's nice. He, he will win games by himself. He is bombastic. Carnifex Demon. He's another fun one I'd love to make a deck around. He's a 6-6 six, six flyer for 6, but he enters the battlefield with 2 neg-1 one, neg-1 one counters. You pump a black and remove a neg-1 one, neg-1 one counter from him to put a neg-1 one, neg-1 one counter on each creature that isn't him. I was thinking about maybe just like taking the old enchantment uh, Torture from uh, Homelands and Shadowmoor, which uh, is a uh, Cullison of Black for a an aura creature enchantment. Um, you pump on to put uh, neg one neg one counters on the enchanted creature. It's like, yeah, let's torture the Carnifex team and, and remove the counters from him. Yeah. That, that, that's funk. That's awesome stuff. Corrupted Harvester, no one cares. No one likes him. I only own two. Except X Sanguine. It's not a bad card. It's really not. Um, X and double black. Each opponent loses X life. You gain that much. Well, you gain life equal to the amount lost this way. Um, that's pretty. That's pretty saucy. Can't complain about it. Pretty saucy. Moving into the blue. Eh, turn aside. It's okay. Counter spell the target's creature you control. Twisted Image. It's one of many cards that have been printed over the years that will swap a creature's power and toughness. This one also gives you a draw card out of it. It's all right. I don't think I'd ever really play it unless I had a trick to use with it. 
Vault Skyward. It's very interesting because it's a common I only have two copies of. Uh, Dark Creature gains flying till end of turn. Untap it. Whoop dee dee. Not impressed by it. Metal Concertar. This guy's nice. He becomes a tapper when you have Metal Craft. Um, he's a control card, really. I mean, control is. You can get a, if you can draft if you can get a fair amount of control in a draft environment, it's huge. Um, would the Surtark see constructed play? Probably not, to be honest. Um, if you're looking for a tapper, you don't want in constructed. You don't want one that only works on metal craft. Um, get yourself a master decoy or a Gideon's fill in the blank thing guy or whatever. You know. There's, there's just better ways to do it. Uh, disperse. Return a non-land permit to owner's hand. Um, the big difference between this and, for example, Boomerang is Boomerang is double blue instead of colorless and a blue. And Boomerang is any permanent. This is non-land. Um, for the most of the time, disperse is going to be better. Oh, simply because it's more splashable. Most of the time. There are some times when the tempo boat boost you get from bouncing an opponent's land is going to be fun. Ah, let me see here. Riddle Smith. He's okay. I don't think I've ever really seen a deck built around him. I've seen people look at him and say, there's got to be a way to break him. Uh, one of you cast an artifact spell. You may draw a card if you do discard a card. I think people are more prone to use Merfolk Looter than that, you know? That's just me. Just me, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Screeching Silk Claw. He's a 1-2 flyer on Metalcraft. If he... If he hits the opponent, and, he ha and you have Metalcraft, you mill, what, four cards? Yeah, four cards. Yeah. I mean, mill decks generally don't use attack strategies, though they do tend to be artifact heavy. I'm not thrilled by it, though. Thrumming Bird! Thrumming Bird's interesting. It's a 1-1 flyer that when it deals combat damage to an opponent, proliferate. That's not bad. It's really not bad. Unfortunately, I've never had a deck or idea where I'd be comfortable putting him in. Um... I suppose the real obvious one would be Thalid decks, and to be perfectly honest, I can't justify putting him in a Thalid deck, because, quite bluntly put, the only thing I could think of for him to remove, or to pull out in favor of him, would be um, Paradox Haze, and Paradox Haze be is better than him. It really is. Um, because you've got... Uh, just a, I mean, you might, because, well, uh, just as an example, it's like, <coughs> Spore Sword Thalid, during my upkeep, puts a Spore Counter on each of my guys. So he practically, pro the Spore Sword practically proliferates every upkeep. So it's just like, he's just not good enough to make the cut, in my opinion. Um, I'm sure there's a deck archetype out there, some, some, somewhere out there there's a deck that has that, that this guy will be awesome in. I just haven't seen it yet. Ah, uh, Plated Sea Strider. I don't think you're going to ever see him in Constructed. I mean, he's got a good toughness, he's a good, he's a good blocker, he's a good stall card, you know, double blue for a 1-4. I mean, seriously, they might as well have made of a wall, too, you know? I don't know. Halt order, counter target artifact, spell, draw a card. Almost anywhere else that wouldn't be a good card, but, you know, in artifact heavy environments, it's nice. Uh, steady progress, proliferate, draw a card. It's okay. I'm not thrilled by it. Trinket Mage. There are some people that get a lot of mileage out of Trinket Mage. 
I don't think any of my decks can really use him. Um, a 2-2 two, two for 3 mana. Hits the board. Search your deck for an uh, artifact with converted mana cost 1 or less. Reveal. Put in hand. Shuffle. I don't have a home for him. I mean, I've heard people, like, building decks around him, but, like, you know, search out, like, important but low cast cost artifacts and this, that, the other thing. And I... I just don't have a home for him. What can I say? Uh, Invisimancer. Coulson double blue for 2-1, unblockable. The turn he hits the board, he makes another creature unblockable. That's not bad, really. Um, in Constructed, there are better and easier ways to make your stuff unblockable. But in draft, that guy can win games. Uh, Stoic Rebuttal. Colossus in double blue. Counter target spell. On Metalcraft. It's just plain counter spell. You know what? It's it's really not a bad card. It's it's not. I mean. At the worst, it's functionally identical to Cancel, which isn't a great card by any stretch of the imagination, but it's decent. Um, conditionally, it's Counterspell. We all know Counterspell is the balls. So, yeah, um, it's okay. I'm pretty sure I have a deck with a playset in it. Pretty sure. Oh well. Uh, Bonds of Quicksilver. This was a fun control card in draft. I don't know if I'd, uh, if I'd play it in Construct or not. Uh, three and a blue for a, an aura. Increase enchantment with flash. Enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. I mean, the main thing with that is, of course, if, you know, end of your, you know, at the end of your opponent's turn, you just flash that in. You know, any kind of control card that you can, with flash, or that's an instant, is pretty good, because it allows you to get back to the good old days of draw go. Some people don't really know what that means, others do. For those that don't, draw go is basically the idea of the control player, on his turn, untaps his lands, draws a card, and says go. He doesn't do anything on his turn. He waits for you to do something, and then he just snaps out and gobbles your stuff up. It's like, you're doing what? Oh, counter! He's more busy on your turn than you are. Oh, well. Um, Lumen Grid, Grid Drake is a 2-2 two -two flyer for 4 on Metalcraft. If he, uh, on metal, when he enters the board, when he hits the board, if you have Metalcraft, turn a creature to owner's hand. You know, if you remove the metal craft from that uh, ability, this guy'd be really solid. With metal craft, he's he's ho hum. You're not going to see him. You're rarely going to see him outside of limited. Shape a new. I somehow managed to get stuck with one of these. It's uh, it's a bad rare. Um, three calls blue sorcery. The controller of target artifact sacrifices it, then reveals cards from the top of his or her library. Until he or she reveals an artifact, that player puts that card onto the battlefield, then shuffles all other cards revealed this way into his or her library. Um, I would not be the least bit surprised if there is a way to break that card. Wouldn't be surprised at all. Unfortunately, it's not a card anyone wants. It's largely considered an ass rare. Dark Slick Drake, he's a 2-4 flyer for 4 mana. When he hits the graveyard, draw a card. Or when he goes to the graveyard from play. Blah, blah, blah. He's not bad. He's reasonably solid. Inexorable Tide! Three colors, double blue, enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell, proliferate. I'm sure, there's a, I'm sure there are things that you can do to work around it. To build around it. To make it useful. I have yet to see it done. Yet to see it done. 
Sky Eel School. It's a 3-3 three, three flyer for 5 mana. When he hits the board, draw a card and discard a card. Sky Eel School is not bad. Um, would I play it in Constructed? Probably not. 5 mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer with a spiffy effect. Um, it's just not good enough for me. Um, for that mana cost, I'm expecting, at the very least, Sarah Angel. At the least. Um, the draw and discard combined with lower power toughness just doesn't impress me. It doesn't. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Volition Reigns, on the other hand. Alright, it's... I put that in the wrong spot. No, I didn't. It's still in the right spot. Okay, at six mana, Volition Range is a little bit pricey. No two ways about it. Three colors and three blue. Um, enchant a part you you know enchant permanent, any permanent on the board. Um, you control that permanent when vill and uh, when Volition Rain takes the board, untap that permanent. Um, it's confiscate. It's seriously confiscate. Dare I say a slightly better version of confiscate? Not by a lot, though. Um, it's it's good. It's really good. Is that a planeswalker? No, it's my planeswalker. Your, yeah, your creature of death and destruction, mine. Um, that's that special land you, that that non-basic land you have over there, over there that's allowing you to do funk. Mine. That's my funk. Kid size of stuff. Um, it's always fun to take control of your opponent's stuff. Always. And scrap diver serpent five five, unblockable if your opponent controls an artifact. He's seven mana though. Um, you don't even see him in draft that often. But, um... He's okay, I guess. In limited, he's okay. In constructed, I, I just wouldn't play him. I really wouldn't. He's too much. Uh... And, you know, the sad part is, is when I talk about cards with casting cost of 4, 5, and 6, and I start talking about how high their casting costs are, um... It does make me w wonder sometimes if maybe it is that I have a really aggressive play style a lot of times. I don't know. Um, it's kind of funny because most of the time I'm a pretty passive guy, but when something comes along and I want it, I can, I can be horribly aggressive. In fact, aggressive to the point where it's detrimental to my goal. And it's kind of funny, too, because my favorite decks are control decks. They really are. I... And, uh... So, I don't know. I mean, I guess... I, I guess I just worry he's coming across as being more of an aggro player than I actually am. I don't know. Oh, well. So, call this done. I know I've rambled a lot and... Still gone, in, gone more in-depth with a lot of these cards than I really wanted to. You know, I'm trying to split the difference between um, when I started the, these uh, these videos and, like, trying to keep them under, like, ten minutes, and now they're regularly going a good half hour or more. Um, Alright. Scars of Mirrodin Artifacts tomorrow. Then after that, I'm going to see how how, how, mu how well I can just try and breeze through Mirrodin Besieged. <coughs> Alright. Have a good one, fellas. Be safe, etc., etc. Yada yada.